is the screen visible hello hello am i audible so sir wait yes a screen screen this to hai na ho ho this to okay 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 that uh, most people don't know i thought it would be an interesting trivia to share next slide please uh before we go to the slide can we go back to the previous slide so for people who are interested in uh, knowing about the chicken of tomorrow contest and how people participated how they were judged and things like that uh, you can um, use the link below which i'll be sharing later in whatsapp also um it contains a video about a uh, short 15 minute video about the entire contest how it was organized what was the prizes what are the characters and things like that it's a very interesting video i highly recommend uh, people watching it the next slide please so what uh, if you look at the um, at the time of the 1930s pre war um, era to come to 2 kg body weight a chicken used to consume about 9.4 kg of feed and 1950s that came down to uh, 6 kg 1970s came down to 5 kg and 2000 uh, it is down to uh, 3.5 kg and 2020 as we speak it has come down to 3 kg and that has developed uh, this development is purely because of uh, nutrition and superior breeding <clears throat> and you can see examples of this um, breeding in for example in corn as well in 1930s the corn acreage uh, the corn productivity per acre was less than 500 and 1950s it became about about 1 ton 1970s it reached about uh, 2 tons in 2000 we have about 3.3 tons this has all been possible only because of nutrition and breeding um so and consequently with the same kind of um, gains can be seen with the shortening of days for example in 1930s a chicken used to um, uh gain a weight of 2 kgs excuse me i think i need to uh, i'm not able to see the bottom of the screen um so it used to uh, take 112 days to reach 2 kg body body weight 1950 it only took 84 days 1970 it took 56 days and 2000 it only takes 45 days now we are about 30 days so uh, this slide was uh, prepared by uh, a leading company called kpf chicken and they have published this in their instagram and um, thanks to them that we have this slide so next slide please so now we will look briefly at the hatchery industry hatchery industry is like uh, one stage before the like broiler or uh, the egg industry uh, but this is some uh, hatchery industry something uh, common for both the industries we look at uh, some of the historical developments and also look at how the future trends in hatchery next slide please next slide yeah so uh, if you look at uh, the way that a hen incubates an egg a typical hen uh, sits on the egg after its uh, clutch is complete excuse me after its clutch of eggs is complete it sits on the eggs it keeps turning the eggs uh, for every um, every hour or so and then it provides its both the temperature and the humidity um i don't know somebody is scribbling on the slide anyways so in 1943 1843 uh, the first patent was issued on the mechanical incubators um in, again in, in united states some of the earlier incubators used to look like this um what you see on the right on the advertisement uh 1853 so the scientists were very successful in developing um 
uh, incubators which emulated the actions of the chicken. So what you see below is uh, um, an incubator uh, which was designed in the 1930s uh, to hatch about 1,000 chicks. So you see the turning arrangement there and the heat was provided by um, uh, burning coal and uh, fresh air was also provided to the uh, incubators. The temperature and humidity were uh, monitored and this happened in 1896. This would lead to the incubator industry. Uh, at this stage, in 1896 itself, the incubators reached um, a hatching egg capacity of 20,000 eggs. And the person behind this uh, innovation was a person by name Charles Cyphers. And uh, this really uh, uh, transformed the uh, poultry industry. Next slide. Please. So this is a present day hatchery. This is our hatchery located near uh, Coimbatore. This is a view of the building from the outside. Uh, this has hatchery was established in the year 2000. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so this is what we called a setting hall. So the egg has to um, be in the incubate, uh, incubator for a period of 21 days before it finally hatches. The first uh, stage, uh, it, it is there in the um, setters. And then the last three days, it is moved to what is called as a hatcher. Where the uh, why it is moved is like uh, the humidity requirements of the egg just before it hatches is slightly higher than um, the incubating period. So it is moved to hatches where this higher humidity can be maintained. And uh, this is a view of the hatcher hall where the temperature, uh, temperature, humidity, um, egg uh, turning, everything is handled uh, automatically. But it really mimics uh, what the uh, Hen is doing in the wild. Next slide, please. So this is a typical day-old chick. This is a broiler chick. Uh, we just spoke about the broiler industry. So this is how a broiler day-old uh, chick uh, looks like. Next slide, please. So this is a modern hatchery. And uh, this is, um, in these modern hatcheries, the advantage is like every single parameter, like let's say the oxygen level, the carbon dioxide level, um, to a very minute level, uh, all this parameter can be monitored and uh, altered to uh, give the op optimum productivity. And uh, hatcheries like this have started coming up in India as well. We do have like uh, quite a few hatcheries of this type in India right now, but this is going to be the uh, way for the future. Next slide. So, fine. I think this is the final uh, um, part of the presentation. Where, uh, why should we be eating more chicken and eggs? From a nutrition, I will be sharing some nutritional perspectives uh, in this part of the presentation. And I think uh, we have like short four or five slides, and then we'll conclude and go for the Q and A. Next slide, please. So if you look at uh, all the um, the major wild, um, major species which contribute to the uh, protein requirements, we have fishes, we have beef, we have pigs, we have mutton, and then we have chicken. So among all these species, um, chicken is like the one which is the lowest, has the lowest feed conversion ratio consumes the lowest amount of feed to gain a kg of body weight. For example, pigs, they take about um, uh, somewhere between three to six kgs of feed to gain one kilo of body weight. The, bee, uh, the cattle uh, consume anywhere between six to 10 kgs of feed to convert to one kilo of body weight. So if you uh, look at terms of um, environmental resources, chicken is the one which consumes the lowest uh, amount of resources. And uh, even if you look at it from a uh, calorie retention and a protein retention point of view, chicken is one where uh, uh, it retains the most amount of 
protein that is given to it and it uh, also retains the most amount of uh, calories that is uh, given to it and all the other meat sources are inferior when uh, when compared to chicken in this aspect next slide please <clears throat> so actually our if you look at our protein needs if you look at any of the uh, recommendations whether it is world health organization indian uh, council of uh, medical research everybody for that matter they recommend a daily protein intake of 1 gram per kilo of body weight for example if a person weighs about 60 kgs he or she needs to take at least 60 grams of protein per day and um, in 2017 report i was not able to access the latest report but the 2017 indian market research bureau's report states that in india uh, we are 80% um, protein deficient a uh, very uh, acute protein deficient see at uh, against the recommended standard of 60 grams per day uh, so so this is something alarming but how does this really affect us protein next slide please so if you look at how protein is affecting us as a country um, if you look at any of the countries which uh, the recent 2012 rio olympics if you look at the olympic medal tally the gold silver bronze in total we can see that all the high medal uh, winning tally uh, the countries are very huge Uh, protein consumers for example uh, per capita the consumption of protein in united states at stands at 42 kilos um, whereas uh, uk it is about 30 33 uh, china is about 22 uh, i think there are something wrong with the figures maybe i will have to uh, recheck on china because maybe they don't uh, use the traditional sources like protein poultry instead they use the other uh, wild uh, as well but you look at india where it stands india in total uh, per year the per capita consumption of protein is 5.1 kilos um, and our medal tally is like abysmally low, uh, low for a um, country of like 1.3 billion people so our sport sports performance is definitely affected by our traditional low protein intake and what other ways that protein intake affects us because a lot of people will have the question okay i'm not a sports person so why should i should take protein the answer is in the next slide next slide please yeah so among the poor what is happening is when they are take, not taking adequate protein it results in uh, malnutrition which uh, leads to a several health complications um, because of this and among the rich when they are not taking protein they try to compensate by eating more carbohydrates and this results in obesity and diabetes and uh, in terms of diabetes ours is the most i think in terms of uh, um, the number of diabetes person per, um, persons per uh, thousand i think our country leads the world and i think this is really linked to the low protein intake and one of the people that people do a lot of people don't uh, um, fail to appreciate is the fact that protein really helps in losing weight so how it helps in losing weight is that protein uh, takes a lot of energy um, to digest which really what happens is it increases the metabolic rate so even without exercising what happens is the metabolic rate of the body increases and we are able to uh, burn our body fat better when we are taking in a lot of protein and the other thing is like it lowers the appetite by uh, when people are taking about 60 grams of protein per day uh, the it creates a feeling of fullness and it really lowers the appetite and uh, this also helps in people uh, losing weight um, stress eating and all those factors it reduces so proteins are very critical i think we have um, 
sort of addressed the protein aspect of it. Next slide, please. Now, now actually, are all proteins uh, equal? It's a question. And uh, and ours is a poor country. We can't really afford the uh, lot of protein. But if you look at the cost per protein, uh, per gram of protein, and uh, the calorie associated with the protein, um, and uh, these prices, you look at sources like protein sources like soybean, chicken, yogurt, beef, egg white, lentils, peanut butter, pork, milk, fish, mutton, paneer, almond, and tofu. Because these are all the really protein rich sources. And uh, this is the price per kilo updated as of 25 12 2019. You can see that uh, the chicken, uh, yogurt, egg whites are some of the lowest cost um, protein. So, and they have like very low calories associated with them. And some people uh, might say like, you know, soybeans are a good source. But uh, soybean, the problem is, even though soybeans have a uh, lower price per gram of protein, many people avoid it because soybeans contain what is called as a phytoestrogens, which are, um, which is, um, mimic the actions of estrogens in a female body. So a lot of uh, doctors, dietitians, uh, they are a little apprehensive about prescribing soybean. This is something that, uh, this is a table that I put together, uh, taking in the protein content, the uh, calorie associated with the protein content, uh, price per kilo. Uh, so this is, uh, I have not cited any sources because the data is entirely mined and the prices are updated as of uh, December end. Um, I put together this data for uh, writing an article which uh, the article also will be shared uh, in the group, in the WhatsApp group uh, later. So next slide, please. So the other critical thing that works in favor of the non-veg sources, like uh, chicken and eggs, is vitamin B12. So if you look at the um, uh, vitamin B12 sources, if you look at the right eggs, red meat, chicken, uh, fish, milk, all these are very good sources of vitamin B12. And uh, vitamin B12 is something that our body can't synthesize by itself. It has to be supplemented from the external sources. But if there's a, a deficiency of vitamin B12, um, we are all familiar with uh, uh, mouth ulcers, dizziness, uh, depression. So all these problems result as a fact um, because of vitamin B12 deficiencies. And it's very critical that we take adequate quantity of vitamin B12 uh, through our food sources. All the non-vegetarian food sources are good uh, uh, vitamin B12 uh, rich sources. So that is the reason why we should be taking um, more of chicken and eggs in our daily diets. Next slide, please. So uh, people might ask, okay, I'm, um, the, I'm happy with uh, beans, legumes, and lentils. Uh, why I should go to the animal sources? See, the problem is with the, the protein quantum in all these sources, beans, legumes, and lentils, have been drastically reduced. One study uh, from 1993 to 2012, uh, they did a study on the protein levels. So in the beans and legumes, they observed that the protein level has dropped drastically by approximately 60% and 60% um, in the two years, mainly because of the depleting soil fertility and pollution. So this is the, the last nail in the coffin, why we shouldn't be dependent on plant sources of protein alone. And um, we should include a lot of uh, animal-based protein in our diets. Um, so whatever it becomes, because to summarize, I think it is like, uh, we are a protein deficient, uh, deficient country. We should be taking a lot of protein. Uh, we are also a vitamin B12, uh, deficient country. Um, the vegetarian sources are simply not adequate, uh, 
uh, to counter the protein requirements of today so all this is happening so i have uh, put this facts together and i leave the decision to you with this next slide please we have come to the end of the uh, presentation um, so i think we can take uh, we have taken a lot of your time we'll take um, we have time for let's uh, let's say one or two questions and then uh, we'll conclude the session sarvesh how many uh, how much time we do we have left well, more than 10 minutes we have okay so we can take a few questions so if you have any doubts uh, you can unmute yourself and ask the question or we have a option of a chat box you can write your question in chat box sir here jailani from came in uh hello jailani sir how are you yes sir i'm good sir how are you sir i'm fine thank you yes sir first of all uh, i would like to thank the very much initiative in the lockdown period for giving a wonderful presentation and also we learning lot from your presentation sir i have one question oh, in you. your layer slide and that yes, uh, slide of layer and broiler slide you are yeah. mentioned that efficiency per kg mm. of 7x uh, that uh, layer lifespan how do you are yeah. calculating sir may know that please 7x per kg is something that we are getting in all our uh, farms in fact we are getting uh, close to uh, above 8 right now but uh, this is something that i have um, this is breed specific so i sort of uh, um, calculated uh, i put in a general number okay so we are getting because like we are uh, giving 8 to 10 grams feed to every in after the, the start of the production yeah so uh, some clarification i asking that yeah i think we can um, we can continue the discussion in uh, offline but this is something that we are seeing every day i mean uh, 1 kg of feed consumed to how many eggs uh, you produce and uh, we are seeing egg productivity to be 8 uh, uh, eggs per kg of production when the birds the flock is at the peak production and it sort of uh, reduces towards the end uh, but the i think the average uh, 7 to 8 is like a good number for uh, the poultry farms in india right now thank you sir Uh, Balaji, you okay. can check the chat box. We have a question there. Yeah, one sec. Can you please tell me how the denaturation of proteins will be prevented during uh, pasteurization? So this yeah. is a very uh, very good question, actually. In fact, um, uh, what is happening is like. Uh, if you look at milk milk uh, is pasteurized at a, a very high temperature when compared to the eggs so what happens is um, eggs can't be taken to a um, very high temperature so uh, i forget the uh, temperature in which it is taken but uh, i think it is about 64 uh, degrees and it has to be constantly agitated when it is being pasteurized to prevent it from uh, being coagulated and uh, there are a number of studies i think we'll i'll share that in um, uh, the whatsapp where the protein quantum a uh, protein denaturation doesn't happen in uh, the eggs um, so i can share the studies the it is there in a book called egg science and technology which deals about egg processing i'll share the tables uh, with you in the whatsapp and there is one more so question so gargi uh, mr gargi takur has asked a question can you share the authentic source of talking about interconnection of olympic medals and protein intake any research paper sir actually this is not a research paper this is just a conjecture see the i have taken protein intake by the countries this is available in publicly uh, public sources and the medal tally medal tally from uh, the olympic uh, rio olympics in the country and uh, basically uh, what i have done is like i put the top 10 medal winners uh, of rio olympics and uh, put the, uh, put the protein consumption of course people can ask uh, uh, there is like you know the um, what is the encourage what is kind of sports in- infrastructure is in place how government encourages sports people um, so on so for there are a number of uh, factors related to uh, olympic medals I, i do agree with all those things 
But uh, the most telling difference, in my opinion, is uh, the protein intake. Uh, in fact, if you look at uh, Gopichan's uh, academy, um, actually, he, um, Saina Neval and all those people who are uh, um, from that academy, their performance really improved once they started taking enough protein through eggs and other sources. So, but, but for, there is an alternative for people who don't want to take non-veg also. You can go in for a whey protein, which is available in, uh, whey protein, which is available in the form of, uh, of both milk-based whey proteins available, egg-based uh, whey proteins available, even plant-based whey proteins available, where you get a very concentrated protein uh, you do not uh, go for uh, eggs and uh, meat also directly. So that is one alternative for uh, most people. But um, the data is pretty much authentic. The Olympic medal tally and their protein data is taken from two independent sources and merged. That's why I haven't put uh, citation. But the data is, yeah. So there's one more question from Suraj Mishra. Any side effects of biofortification of chicken meat? Is there any vaccination given to chicken while they are being wrapped? See, vaccination is something that uh, everybody is being given. And in fact, even for children, they are giving like a small, smallpox and BCG and malaria and all those uh, vaccines are being given. So there's nothing wrong in uh, vaccinations per se. And uh, fortification of chicken meat, uh, I'm not sure what specifically you are referring to. But there is a fortification of uh, selenium that is happening in chicken in Western countries that has not really come to India right now. There's fortification in uh, eggs. Um, uh, for example, uh, uh, dicosahexaonic acid or DHA in short, omega-3, selenium. Now all these uh, nutritions are being fortified into chicken and being given as... Uh, 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 value added eggs. This fortification has uh, no harmful effect. In fact, chicken is a very good vehicle. The egg is a very good vehicle for uh, these nutrients, mainly because the protein um, retention and the calorie retention and the retention of so many amino acids so good in poultry, which I explained in one of my slides. So there's really no problem in uh, giving these fortifications. Any other questions? Sir, good afternoon, sir. Myself, Dr. Muthukmar from Zaydes. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Okay. Sir, uh, very nice presentation, sir. You have gathered information and uh, very clearly explained uh, to the, all the industries in our poultry industry. So, okay, uh, small sir. Plant, what is that in layer and broiler side you have given, no? Yeah. So, in fact, uh, layer uh, you have given for the ad limited feeding. And broiler is given for the restricted feeding. But instead, yes. we follow there only we follow the restricted feeding, and broiler will give the ad libitum feeding. That's one more clarification I want to tell you. I shared in WhatsApp also. So just I okay. share. Uh, I'd like to dispute that because I have a layer form as well. But, but anyway, like we'll take this offline. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay, we have uh, two you. minutes left for the session. So we will. Uh, we have time for one last question. I yeah, think. Is, is it there, or anyone wants to ask? I think uh, no question. So if uh, you have any question uh, in your mind, you can ask them on WhatsApp group. Uh, Mr. Balaji is there. And I will be sharing the recording with Mr. Balaji. Those who want the recording can contact him personally. Right, sir. Uh, thank you so much uh, for all for joining. It's been a complete uh, honor. Uh, this is the first time I've been doing um, a presentation like this. Um, uh, again, thank you so much for uh, joining. And uh, thank you to Gia Eco Tours for the opportunity, without whom I couldn't have reached to a such wider audience in this lockdown period. And uh, I think the, because of the connectivity issues in the morning, a lot of people couldn't join in the uh, uh, afternoon session. 
well i think uh, we can share the presentation to them and i'll be happy to take the questions uh, offline also my uh, um, i think in my slide the presentations are uh, the contact info is not there i'll share it in the whatsapp group thank you very much okay thank you balaji and thank you all for joining for the session thank you thank you very much A very nice session thank you, yeah, thank you so much yeah. see you thanks to all